say you are the project manager of an event that's happening and you need to create a registration form you need to create the promotions do the, all the marketing and then you also need to prepare what happens during the event and then after the event let's say collecting feedback from everyone and preparing for the next sequel as well so all of this is to be done it's a lot and you need to plan when and how it's done and that's where tools like Gantt chart are pretty useful in creating a visual of what all is to be done and when. This is what a typical Gantt chart looks like and today in this video I will be making sure that you know different tools on which you can create Gantt chart and then also create one for your own project by the end of this video. I will be continuing with the example that we just talked about in the beginning. But before we start, let's understand the pros and cons of using a Gantt chart. So the pros, of course, are that you will have a visual in which you can see all of the different things that are to be done. And you can also see when the previous thing ends and the new thing is to be started. So you have a clear picture and kind of something that's right in front of your eyes. And you can see whether it's going to be completed on time and you get more confident looking at it. Then, of course, you can see the dependencies. Let's say if the next task is dependent on the previous one, you can mark those also in Gantt chart and be able to map them as well. And then another great benefit is that you can see the sequence of tasks, what is to be started at one point in time. So you don't have to start everything on day one. You need to go step by step and all those steps can be visually seen in the Gantt chart. But there are also some cons of using a Gantt chart and you should know when not to use it. In some cases, if there are too many team members or the team members want to keep things simple, Gantt chart can seem overwhelming. So you need to make sure which stakeholders it was it will be useful for and not everybody would need to see it or be a part of creating it. And then second is that you cannot rely just on the Gantt chart because it will give you a visual of the overall activities that are happening, but it cannot act as a project plan. So you will have to create something more detailed when it comes to the tinier activities that are involved in doing the entire project. And now we'll start on how to make the Gantt chart. And you can use tools which are professional Gantt chart creating tools and they may be a part of, let's say, products like Microsoft Projects or let's say Asana, let's say Monday.com. They have a section called Gantt and you can create charts from the existing tasks itself and you can watch my tutorials on all of these tools also. And Gantt is usually one of the views of the tool itself and using the existing data, you can create a chart out of all of those activities and timelines. But if you cannot invest so much time or money money into these tools then what you could do is you could simply create something on an excel uh, sheet or even google sheet something like that and i'll give you a quick view of that too how that happens so let's say this is a google sheet and i am supposed to create a gantt chart on this then i can list everything here and then i can also have columns that act as the timelines so that's how it will look like you will know how to create this by the end of the video but i just need to make sure that you understand that it can be done on pretty much uh, different types of tools and these types of tools and then my favorite one is this one which is called online Gantt and this one is free completely free and it uh, happens to be completely online itself and uh, you don't have to rely on let's say you know keeping it in your computer and then unable to use it on another computer let's say and I think that's the beauty of it so you are able to use it on cloud as well today what I'll do is I will use this tool itself so at least I don't have to go in the mess of utilizing the tool I want to show you the methodology of creating a Gantt chart and not the tools you can let me know if you want me to cover those as well but for now I think I want to show you how to think when creating a Gantt chart and the first step to get started to create a Gantt chart is to know the scope of everything that is going to happen. So a scope document can be something very, very simple in a Google document also. And I would also suggest learning about the work breakdown structure. It's a more formal way of doing the scoping, but uh, I would suggest to learn it. And I'll quickly give you an example of what it would look like. Let's say we are talking about the event. And if I try to put it in a Google document, it will look something like this. So now this work breakdown structure has the different categories of work that we will be doing and it also has a list of all of the activities that we are going to do under each category now that we have this we know what all is to be done right we have created the activities we've created the tinier projects also that are to be carried out the third step after creating the work breakdown structure and creating the activities list is to make sure that you understand the sequence of activities so what happens before what and after what and what all is going to happen in parallel that's what we need to learn before creating the Gantt if you want to do it on pen and paper that is also completely fine but on tools like these you 
can quickly change them as well. So let's say I've listed down all of these different categories and activities here in the tool. And now I'm going to add the sequence. So I will know, let's say this one happens after the next one. So only after preparation, the next task that will be the marketing that will happen. So at least I know the sequence now. The fourth step is to understand the resources that you have. So let's say if you have four people in the marketing and you have just one person that is going to run everything, then it can be some imbalance and you have to keep that in mind before the next step. So understand what all your resources are. And if it is a bigger team, don't be afraid to ask it to your team. Let's say if you are leading the project, which also involves designers, make sure to understand what is the availability and number of designers also that's being allotted to you. And then when you have everything, you know the activities, you know the timeline sequence, you also know what resources you have, then you are able to create the duration of each activity too. Now that uh, uh, you know the estimations, you can plot that in this Gantt chart and give it a starting and an end date. Remember, these are usually tentative. That's why we don't go by the day or by the time. Usually you can do it by the week or even by the month, depending on how big and vast the project is. Then then finally we create a schedule because now we know on a certain day on a certain week what all we are focusing on so this thing is happening in parallel with the next task or we are doing marketing and we are going to do the planning of the event date itself side by side so we are able to do those task mapping and we are also able to communicate that to our teams make sure that you check in on the Gantt chart every day or every week or every let's say two weeks depending on again how big the project and how long it's going to run and you're sorted. That's how the Gantt charts work. Uh, another way to use Gantt charts if you want to do retrospectives in the future is that you can have an ideal Gantt chart plotting and then also the actual Gantt chart plotting. So let's say something that was planned for four weeks it actually took you five weeks to do. Then you're able to go back and see, okay, you know, that was underestimated. How do we improve it next time? So you can do retrospectives as well after you have, uh, you know, the original planned and versus the actual execution picture of the Gantt charts. And that was it. I think I tried to cover all the basics. I hope this was helpful for you to understand and get started on Gantt. And if you have any questions and if you want me to cover more topics on project management, you can comment down below. Make sure that you also follow me on Instagram because I'm sharing a lot of resources on project management there. And I'm also going to do some webinars. So make sure that you subscribe here and also on Instagram. See you in another video.